So let's try to um, build superoxide using molecular orbital theory, okay? So remember when we were doing molecular orbital theory, this was a couple chapters ago, but now we've just introduced superoxide, so we're going to build that. We're only going to be talking about uh, the valence electrons, okay? So remember, what does O2 minus look like, or what is it composed of? It's going to be composed of O and O minus, right? So if we add those two things together, O and O minus, we'll get O2 minus. Is everybody okay with that? Okay, wonderful. So when we look at the atom oxygen in its valence shell, its valence shell is in period two, or energy level two, right? So it's going to have the 2s and 2p um, orbitals to fill. Okay, so let's write those down. So just the atomic, like that. more room. <coughs> okay, so down here, that's going to be the 2s. 2s, and these should be at the same level. I'm not trying to make one more energetic. 2s and 2s, um, and 2p, 2p, so all three of those are the 2p's. So when we build uh, the atomic orbital, we've got to see how many valence electrons each of these atoms, or ions in this case, would have, right? So if we look, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, right? That's what we would expect oxygen to have. So if we remember our filling rules, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6, like that, okay? O minus, of course, has 6 plus 1 electron. So it's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, like that. Is everybody okay with what we've done so far? So now we're going to build our molecular orbitals. Okay. So this one down here. Sigma 2s, sigma star 2s, okay? Now remember oxygen, oxygen, fluorine, and neon, these are the normal filling ones. So they're going to have their sigmas first. It's not super even, but now we've got the sigma 2p, pi 2p, pi 2p, pi star 2p, pi star 2p, sigma star 2p. You guys remember how to build those things? Okay, wonderful. Now what do we do? We just put them in, right? As they would fill, normal. So, one, two. So one, two, three, four. One, two, 
three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. Right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Like that. Everybody okay with that feeling? Okay, so now let's think of, well, what's the bond order? Okay, so if the bond, uh, for this to exist, the bond order has to be what? Uh, z greater than zero. Greater than zero. Okay? So, do you guys remember the bond order um, equation? One half. The bonding electrons minus the anti-bonding electrons, right? Okay, so we've got one half. How many bonding electrons? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, right? Minus the anti-bonding. One, two, three, four, five. So remember, with molecular orbital theory, we can have half bond orders, okay, which is what we're thinking that we're going to have here. So it would be one half times three, right, which would be 1.5. So that's the bond order. So would you expect this thing to exist or not? Yeah, yeah definitely. It exists. Okay. And would this be attracted to a magnet? Would you expect? Superoxide? Why? Because it's got an unpaired electron, right? Yes, definitely. And I guess the other thing we can do is write its um, molecular orbital electron configuration. Do you want to do that? So let's do that. So for it to not exist. Um, it's the bond order, order has to be, be zero. Okay. Okay. If it's it can only it can only be zero or positive numbers. Can't be negative. Can't be negative okay. So the reason being is because you got to fill the bonding orbitals before the anti-bonding orbitals. Right. So the least amount of electrons you could have is one, right? So that would be a half bond order. Yeah. If that makes sense. Okay. Uh, but you could have a bond order of zero if you had two and two or something. Which would be a non-existent molecule. Yeah, go back. I've recorded a few more of these. Go back and check those out too. Okay, this is a more detailed one, of course. Uh, but let's write the orbital configuration or the electron configuration. So how do we do that? Well, we just look at what we've got here. So remember, in this case, we put them in parentheses. So sigma two s two. Like that, right? Because we've got two electrons in the sigma 2s. Okay, then what would be next? Good job. Sigma star 2s, right? And how many do we have in there? Two. Two. Very good. Then next? Sigma 2p. Sigma 2p. How many? Two. Two. And then next? Uh, pi 2p. Pi 2p. How many? And you add them all together, so just like you said, four. And do we have more? Pi star 2p. And how many? Three. So that would be the electron configuration. Questions? So if it has a sigma, like the top of sigma star 2p, it has nothing you don't. You're not going to include it, no. You're not going to include it. It's just like if you were talking about, I don't know, oxygen itself, atom, and you say, well, what about the 3x? Right? You don't say anything about it because there's no electrons. It's just represented in the atom. Yeah. It's, well, it's got that orbital there, but it's just no electrons in it. Okay? So that orbital does exist. There's just, it's like a house that's not on. It's there, but nobody lives. Any questions about this? Okay, this is a good question. Okay. 
Okay, good. Okay, do you want it on this one? No, okay. So good job, guys. Um, that's all I have for you today, so. Okay, bye-bye.